Uh, welcome back. The United States FDA has approved the first oral treatment for postpartum depression. I'm sure I'm going to butcher this name terribly of the drug. Zoranolone is a once-a-day pill. It claims to help roughly 15% of women who are struggling with depression and anxiety after childbirth. The drug, though, yet to be approved for use here in South Africa. Let's get the thoughts of how much of a difference it could make if it's approved here. Professor Glenda Gray, of course, from the Medical Research uh, Council. Prof, good to have you uh, with us. And before we just talk about this pill in a second, I, there's often a belief that most women who have given birth and are new mothers don't even know that they have postpartum depression. They don't even recognize it, uh, that they're dealing with it as an issue, isn't it? They may call themselves they've got the baby blues and they don't, may not understand why they're crying or feel tearful. But um, uh, postpartum depression affects about one in five women. And it's potentially life-threatening because it can lead to suicide. In, a, in addition, if you are feeling like this, it's very hard to bond with your child and it may have ongoing repercussions. So postpartum depression is also stigmatizing because um, a lot of women should feel that they should be excited that they have their, their baby and they can't understand why they're feeling like this. So it's very stigmatized. Mm -hmm. Women are very, it's very hard to, to admit that you're feeling sad and you can't bond with your baby because of your sadness. Yeah, because everyone else is so happy around you that you feel something's wrong with you because you aren't happy. And as you say, you aren't bonding uh, as well. Generally, treatments for postpartum, do they work? And that's why I want to ask you about this, this new FDA-approved uh, oral treatment. What do you make of that? And do postpartum treatments, medical treatments, tend to have the desired effect? So it's very hard to treat postpartum depression and some of the drugs that we use for anti for depression takes about four weeks to, to kick in. And the longer you wait to treat postnatal depression, the harder it becomes refractory. It, it becomes very difficult to reverse. So uh, one of the biggest causes of postpartum depression is actually hormonal. And as you have your baby, there's certain hormones in your brain that um, start to to to, uh, to decrease in the, in the bloodstream. And uh, one of them is allopregnanolone. And this drug actually targets that. So this is a synthetic hormone, this drug, and it's a, it's a neuroactive steroid and it rebalances the brain networks. It works um, within 48 hours to three days. It's a once a day pill for 14 days and can last up to 42 days. And so it gets, mm. it gets there very easily. Other drugs that you may use are usually intravenous and they cost uh, like 35,000 US dollars. So completely out of our remit, particularly for poor people in the state sector. Yeah, and give me a sense as well uh, when it comes to uh, having this approved in South Africa, when uh, the United States uh, FDA has approved that, is it pretty much a rubber stamp from South Africa or do we as a country and the uh, Medical Research Council, do you go back and, and try and do independent testing on that or do you take essentially what the US has said and go, look, as long as you're happy with it, we're happy to implement. What's your step? What's your advice next? Every regulatory, every country's regulatory um, authority is a sovereign um, authority. So um, the the company would have to lodge the dossier in South Africa. The the SARPA regulators would review the data and maybe ask for additional studies if they're happy that there be enough uh, women of color that have been um, in, in enrolled in the study. And if they're happy with the kind of data that's that's uh, arising, then it can be registered. Otherwise, they may ask for um, they may register it, but ask for a limited registration, ask for additional data that that can happen in what we call a phase four or post-marketing um, data. So it all depends on the kind of uh, spectrum, the, the the description of women and whether they fit our demographics in our country. Mm. Um, it's very important, you know, there, is, there are bilateral relationships between regulators and there may be discussions between the two regulators, but it depends on the... Um, the company itself to submit the dossier in South Africa. So they have to determine whether there's enough uh, women that would suffer from postpartum depression. And of course it will, because it's one in five women. We have one million deliveries per annum. And so we, there's a huge burden of postpartum depression in our country. Let's talk affordability as well for a drug uh, like this. Is this going to be for the very lucky few prof that have got medical aid? Is this going to be available if it were to be passed, uh, if it were to be given permission? Would this be available at, at local clinics? I'm also thinking rural areas uh, as well. What's the sort of reach of this drug, do you hope and do you think? 
Well, I hope it reaches every woman because every woman deserves to be treated for their postpartum depression. A lot of poor men, poor women are stigmatized. They may not recognize it. Um, remember that this drug is not only, it's not only, a, it's not a silver bullet. Uh, women need counseling. They need uh, the diagnosis to be made by doctors and nurses. And they also need support by their families. And often uh, poor women may not recognize or be diagnosed. And so they may not even get it, even if it is available in the, in the public sector. So there's a a lot of work that has to be done in terms of postpartum depression and one of the first things is to to make sure people know how to diagnose it and destigmatize it and then there are a lot of interventions that you can do until you wait for the drug to arrive like counseling other antidepressants and and support of family and and friends mm -hmm. so it's important to see this in the context that this is not a silver bullet but definitely will help women. Um, I think it's very important to make sure that we negotiate an exit price appropriately. Um, thank goodness it's only a 14-day uh, drug uh, once a day, and so hopefully it won't be expensive. And hopefully um, it will be on our essential medicine list uh, once it is registered in our country, which means that the state sector can procure it. And then for the moment, I'm going to say, Professor Glenda Gray, thank you very much indeed. It sounds like it could be good news if it were to uh, be passed and brought to South Africa as well. Postpartum, uh, not a joke at all to those who suffer from it, of course. A uh, very, very big issue, especially for new mums. And hopefully this might be uh, a way of providing uh, the kind of relief and assistance and medical help uh, that they need that's not going to cost an arm and a leg. Uh, my thanks, as always, uh, to uh, Glenda, Glenda Gray from the Medical Research Council. Professor Glenda Gray.